Muhammad Hijab has abandoned Islam. He's now an ex-Muslim. He's an apostate. He's just too dumb to realize it. So, as usual, we'll have to explain it to him very, very slowly. What led to Hijab's apostasy? Quick review. Back in June, Muhammad Hijab, in a state of total delusion about the preservation of the Quran, had Sheikh Yasser Qadi on a live stream and tried to get the good Sheikh to say that there's only one Quran, perfectly preserved, right down to the letter. Instead of affirming Hijab's delusions, however, Dr. Qadi absolutely destroyed the myth of perfect preservation, and Muslims around the world have been blaming Hijab and Dr. Qadi for crushing their confidence in the Quran. Hijab has been trying to redeem himself ever since, but he's not very wise in his tactics. Apart from screaming at Muslims and telling them they're weak if they don't mindlessly accept the standard narrative about the Quran, he's gone off the deep end with insults and abuse. Hijab started sending the apostate prophet messages telling him that he should kill himself. Then Hijab showed up in the chat while we were doing a live stream and began posting disgusting comments, telling us to engage in perverted sexual practices that many people didn't understand until they looked them up, because unlike Sapiens Institute representative Muhammad Hijab, they're not experts in bondage and fetish porn. Following his tirade about golden showers, Hijab launched a campaign against the wives of critics of Islam. His tweets about women are saturated with imagery of rape and torture. For instance, Here's one of Hijab's tweets about the apostate prophet's wife, Mrs. Apostate. When these anti-Muslim attention whore Islamophobes need to get on their knees in intellectual submission before they are whipped by freedom of speech by the Twitter Muslims, and they reluctantly open their mouth in protestation and find they have been defiled by the truth. Notice the imagery. Get on their knees. Submission whipped by Muslims, open their mouth to find they have been defiled. It would be illegal to post a threat about forcing the apostate prophet's wife to her knees, whipping her, and defiling her, so Hijab adds some words. Intellectual submission, whipped by freedom of speech, open their mouth in protestation, defiled by truth. Hijab doesn't try to hide the fact that he's crafting these messages to make sure they're legal. Indeed, he tells his followers to join his campaign of abuse, but he warns them to make sure that their harassment doesn't break the law. I call upon all of the Muslim Twitter soldiers to work within the full scope of the law to create maximum damage to the cause of, that's his name for the apostate prophet, and his public figure with, that's his name for Mrs. Apostate. They are demoralized and on the ropes do not let the weak-minded Muslims deter you. Finish them. So, Hijab isn't simply using imagery of rape and torture in his campaign of online abuse against women. He's encouraging his followers to do the same. He's trying to shut down criticism of Muhammad and the Quran by targeting the families of critics of Islam. He thinks that if he showers women with abuse and veiled threats of rape and torture, their husbands will eventually back down. Instead of backing down, however, some husbands decided to nip this in the bud by letting Hijab know that if he wants to escalate by insulting and abusing women, critics of Islam can simply escalate in return by insulting and abusing the Quran. And that's when Muhammad Hijab tried to pretend that he has the moral high ground here. He wrote, The difference between us and you is this. We disrespect Islamophobes like you, who disrespect our community. You disrespect our religion and our community. Quite frankly, I have never and would never gratuitously insult any sacred symbol in any religion, even though I can legally. Unlike us, Hijab has never and would never gratuitously insult any sacred symbol in any religion. He'll lie. He'll cheat. He'll heap abuse on women and encourage others to do so. He'll tell people to kill themselves. He'll babble about golden showers. But unlike us, he would never gratuitously insult any sacred symbol in any religion. What a great man. 
He is clearly claiming that it's wicked and immoral to gratuitously insult the sacred symbols of other religions. Now, we all know how Islam works. When Muslims are in the minority, it's wrong to insult other people's religions. But as soon as they're in the majority, we're destroying your statues and converting your churches and temples into mosques. But let's ignore most of Islamic history because hijab might say, well, those were just bad Muslims who were smashing those Hindu idols and sprinkling the pieces in front of the mosques so that Muslims would trample them regularly. Let's go back to the first generation of Muslims and see how they compare to Muhammad hijab. Obviously, since it's wicked and immoral to insult the sacred symbols of other religions, the Prophet Muhammad must have been extremely respectful in his interactions with the pagans of Mecca. The History of At-Tabri, Volume 6, page 93. The Messenger of God, Muhammad, proclaimed God's message openly and declared Islam publicly to his fellow tribesmen. When he did so, they did not withdraw from him or reject him in any way, as far as I have heard, until he spoke of their gods and denounced them. Notice that the pagans of Mecca didn't have any problem with Muhammad preaching Islam until he started denouncing their gods. But according to Hijab, it's wicked and immoral to insult other people's sacred symbols, so maybe Muhammad was denouncing them in a non-insulting fashion. A little later, in At-Tabari, page 101, the pagans complain about Muhammad's religious intolerance. They say, We have never seen the like of what we have endured from this man. He has derided our traditional values, abused our forefathers, reviled our religion, caused division among us, and insulted our gods. We have endured a great deal from him. Muhammad reviled their religion and insulted their gods, the very things that Hijab says no good person would ever do. Since Muhammad is the pattern of conduct in Islam, it should come as no surprise that his companions followed his example by insulting the sacred symbols of the pagans. In the passage we're about to read, a pagan named Urwa points out that there are only two possible outcomes for Muhammad in his war against his own tribe, the Quraysh. If Muhammad is victorious over the Quraysh, he'll be remembered as a man who slaughtered his own tribesmen. If the Quraysh are victorious over him, his followers will abandon him. Either way, Muhammad loses, so he should end his war against the Quraysh. Not a bad argument, but watch how Abu Bakr, Muhammad's closest companion and the first of the rightly guided caliphs, responds to Urwa. The History of At-Tabri, Volume 8, page 76. Urwa went to the prophet and began speaking to him. The prophet spoke as he had spoken to Budayl. Then Urwa said, Muhammad, tell me, if you extirpate, if you completely destroy your tribesmen, have you ever heard of any of the Arabs who destroyed his own race before you? And if the contrary comes to pass, by God, I see both prominent people and rabble who are likely to flee and leave you. Abu Bakr said, Go suck the clitoris of a lot. A lot was a goddess worshipped by Urwa. So Abu Bakr answers Urwa's entirely reasonable call for peace with an extraordinarily offensive insult against Urwa's religious beliefs. Go perform oral sex on your goddess, Urwa. This is how one of the greatest Muslims ever responded to a pagan in the presence of Muhammad himself. Now, if I were to say, hey, Muhammad Hijab, why don't you go suck your prophet's penis? Or, hey, Ali Dawa, why don't you go give oral to Allah? They would immediately condemn me and start begging Christians to rebuke me. But in doing so, they would actually be condemning their own prophet and his companions. Interestingly, Muhammad Hijab knows about Abu Bakr telling Urwa to go suck Allah's clitoris because Hijab uses this story to justify his own abusive language towards non-Muslims. And yet, somehow, Hijab still insists that it's wicked and immoral to insult the sacred symbols of another religion. The Muslims eventually defeated the pagans of Mecca, and that's when Muhammad got to demonstrate how to show respect towards the beliefs of others.
there were 360 idols at the Kaaba. Remember, according to Hijab, it's completely immoral to insult the sacred symbols of other groups. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2478. Narrated Abdullah bin Masud, the Prophet entered Mecca, and at that time there were 360 idols around the Kaaba. He started stabbing the idols with a stick he had in his hand and reciting, and say truth, i.e. Islamic monotheism or this Quran or jihad against polytheists, has come, and batal, falsehood, i.e. Satan or polytheism, has vanished. Muhammad went around stabbing the idols. He desecrated them. And what did Muhammad and his followers do after that? They smashed the idols to pieces. Why? Because that's what Muhammad was sent to do. In Sahih Muslim, 1930, Muhammad declares that he was sent to break the idols. Muhammad, breaker of idols. What will the Islamic Jesus do when he returns? Sahih Muslim, 389, the Messenger of Allah said, By the one in whose hand is my soul, soon the son of Miriam will descend among you as a just judge. He will break the cross, kill the pigs, and abolish the jizya, and wealth will become so abundant that no one will accept it. So, Muhammad stabs and breaks the idols. Jesus is going to break everyone's crosses. I'm starting to think that this religion has absolutely no respect for the sacred symbols of other people's religions. But what is Muhammad Hijab's boast? I have never and would never gratuitously insult any sacred symbol in any religion, even though I can legally. Hijab condemns us for insulting the sacred symbols of his religion. He says that he would never do something so evil, so vile, so morally reprehensible. So Muhammad Hijab is better than Abu Bakr, right? And he's better than the Islamic Jesus, right? And he's better than his own prophet, right? And since Allah declares in Surah 33, verse 21 of the Quran, that Muhammad is an excellent pattern of conduct, while Hijab is saying that Muhammad is a terrible pattern of conduct because he insulted people's gods and goddesses, Hijab is claiming to be better than Allah, isn't he? The Islam I hear about from Muslims around the world today bears almost no resemblance whatsoever to the Islam I read about in actual Muslim sources. Allah tells us, what a Muslim is in Surah 4, verse 65 of the Quran. But know, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. Islam means submission. According to Allah, you submit to him by submitting to Muhammad. You have no real Islamic faith until you find in yourself no resistance against Muhammad's decisions. But Muhammad is the breaker of idols. And Muslims today tell me that it's wrong and immoral to insult the sacred symbols of other religions. What does this mean? It means that Muslims like Muhammad Hijab are actually apostates. They've condemned their own God and their own prophet. Since they haven't fully accepted all of Muhammad's decisions, since they find within themselves resistance against Muhammad's decisions, they have no real Islamic faith. So guess what, Muhammad Hijab? You and I are actually on the same side here. We're united in condemning your prophet. We're united in condemning your God. We're united in condemning your book. We're not united on whatever creepy golden showers nonsense you're into. We're not united on defiling women and such. But at least we agree that Muhammad was a horrible, horrible person. As an ex-Muslim, you probably now despise not only your former prophet, but also his book. Since you condemn your prophet, you'll obviously want to condemn his book as well. But we've seen, however, that unlike your former prophet, you would never insult the sacred symbol of any religion. You're too good for that. So you want to insult the Quran, but you can't. 
Don't worry, though. I'll take care of that part for you. I'm David Wood, breaker of false prophets, eater of demonic books. I gave you four days with no provocation whatsoever. I gave you time to ponder your mistakes, and you still didn't take down your tweets attacking women. A year from now, you'll be looking back at your decision to abuse women on Twitter as the greatest mistake you ever made. And given your interview with Sheikh Yasser Qadi, that's saying something.